a strong storm in the Pacific Northwest drives east. That's going to make what I think could be an interesting weather week along the southeast and into the northeast. And I think we're still looking at some cold changes heading into November. That could mean chances for snow for some areas. We're going to look at where that might happen. Let's start big picture and let's start with where we are right now. The players on the table, we've got this piece of energy that's moving into the Pacific Northwest with heavy snow, some severe weather across the deep south today across the Gulf Coast, relatively dry though across the mid-Atlantic and the Ohio Valley, also the upper Midwest looking pretty nice here. Cool though into the Northeast, but not bad. I mean, typical fall weather. Warm across the prairies of Canada, all the way up to the Hudson Bay, way above average, but the cold air is lurking and it's going to be moving in. Let's move this ahead in time pretty quickly. We're also watching Melissa, which fortunately for the lower 48, looks like it's going to stay out to sea. Unfortunately, it's going to cause big problems across the Caribbean. As we head now into Monday, rain moving into the southeast. It's also turning colder across the west. Maybe some snow into parts of Alberta, pushing into parts of Saskatchewan. Definitely seeing some colder air moving here. Also down into parts of Montana, South Dakota. Temperatures on the way down. And this cold air will play a part in what happens with our next storm that starts to develop somewhere across the southeast coast. And this could come in two waves. First of all, the GFS has been trying to show another storm developing heading into Tuesday and Wednesday. This was going to initially be the storm. Now we've really split this up. And then we have Melissa in the mix, too. So you can imagine with multiple storms just out in the Atlantic, big waves and surf are going to be a problem. And now we're watching this cold pocket of air drop into the southeast. It's also stormy across the Pacific Northwest, too, with more rain and snow headed here. And then... Look how active it gets across the southeast and also along the east coast. Multiple things happening. Surface low pressure developing by Thursday and Friday right here along the Carolina coast with this cold pocket of air. Look how amplified this setup is. And you also got a cold pocket of air up here to the northeast to just complicate things even more. It's why the models are having such a hard time dialing in. You've got these different cold pockets of air that are cut off from what you would normally see in the atmosphere that might flow like this, right, with an upper level jet stream driving things well when these cold pockets of air get cut off they're like eddies in water they just spin freely sometimes they meander and the models have a hard time following that so clearly erratic forecast showing up when you look out into next week by the end of next week the gfs and the european have two different solutions the gfs takes this out to sea i'll show you what the european is doing in a second it's putting some snow still into the mountains of west virginia at least some cold air not a Big deal, but interesting to see. Let's take this out. Big changes happening across the Northwest Territories into Western Canada. This is going to have an impact further to the east as we head into the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th of November, I think. There's going to be quite a bit of warm air, though, across the southern plains, across the southwest. The cold air is going to be locked up to the north. So November may start relatively warm across parts of the south, but here comes the change. Your bear clinic zone starts to drop to the south. That's your difference in temperatures. Your cold air starts to build in, and along that, we're starting to see storms form. The GFS, I think, has been pretty aggressive at this. I'm not going to time any particular storm out. We don't know where this energy that's still way, if it's even formed across Asia right now, where that's going to be as we head towards the 6th and 7th and the 8th. But the fact is, if you get this cold air moving south, these pieces of energy have a chance to blow up and do something along wherever that is. So it's why I think the snow chances are still there heading into November. And while there will be some chillier temperatures with numbers in the 30s and 40s underneath the rain and the snow that's probably going to move into parts of the east and the great lakes the real cold holds off until later into november and it's pretty chilly too coming from the arctic if you want to track winter with me subscribe hit that notification button if you're brand new i'm travis i used to be a chief meteorologist in the tv business years ago but i always say once you're a weather geek you're always a weather geek so subscribe come back and let's geek out together this winter let's start across the west this is where the storm that's going to move to the east is right now it's putting some big snow into the mountains that drops into the plains as we head into monday and tuesday brings the showers here it starts to get a little bit uh, quieter across the pacific northwest but another storm is on the heels of this one bringing more rain and snow into british columbia by tuesday there's your snow, though, just through Monday. In the mountains, we could see several feet of snow, especially once you get pretty high up. And that snow is going to spread into the Rockies, too, and the northern Rockies as we head through the weekend. It's a little too warm for snow in some of these areas right now. Pretty warm across the prairies, down into parts of the Dakotas. But the colder air starts to build in, so we go from highs in the 70s 
I don't know that we're going to get close to 80, but we dropped that back into the 40s, 50s, uh, even some 30s further north into Calgary and up towards Edmonton, much colder weather. And that cold is lurking just to the north. Here's where we are today. The showers and the severe weather across the Gulf Coast. Also some rain across parts of Missouri moving east into the Tennessee Valley, heading into Monday and Tuesday. Uh, there comes your next piece of energy that drops into parts of the plains. Underneath this cold and damp, some showers dropping in. And look at this bowling ball of cold air. Did you see that? I'm going to back that up one more time. Notice how it's just spinning on its own. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's cut off from the main flow. It's not like you're dealing with this huge negatively tilted trough that's dropping in from the northwest. So that's going to be interesting to watch heading into next week. Heading into the following week, you start to get pretty active. And I think here comes the cold starting to build in. I've been saying the 4th, 5th, 6th, getting into the middle part of November. To me, it looks much colder with more chances for snow, you got to get cold first, right? And we are not there yet. We are warm today, so enjoy it while it lasts. Here's a look further to the east, and we'll look at the European because there are drastic differences. I showed you the GFS earlier, how it's handling that coastal storm. And as promised, here's what the European is doing. Everything pretty much in alignment heading through the weekend, the next several days. The European has a different look. It cuts this cold core of air off a little bit slower and a little bit further to the north, and it moves it along pretty quickly and it develops a really strong coastal low that impacts a lot of the northeast with wind, rain, maybe some mountain snow. Doesn't look like a huge snow event at this point. It never has, and it's just going to be into the highest elevations. But yesterday's GFS had snow into the mountains of the northeast. Today, not so much. I just don't think this is going to be a big snowmaker, but it could cause huge problems along the coast. We've just been battered this fall and maybe more on the way. And then take a look, really long range. I know, I don't like to watch any particular model really far out, but the trend for a much colder 4th, 5th, and 6th is showing up. Look at the European also on board with this idea that we get strong northwest flow. That would bring lake effect snow into play as we head toward this time frame as well. And then I got to wonder, you know, how, how does this all set up? What kind of storms do you look at? Are we seeing something that moves like this? Or are we just going to be dealing with clipper systems? And if you look at the overall pattern heading into November, this is looking top down. We're looking at the North Pole. And by the way, these are going to be really amplified to start. And you're going to notice how things flatten out, as we say in the meteorology world with these models, because the members are pretty close together. This map is using more than 50 different solutions from the European Clearly on board with that storm across the southeast, ridging across the far southwest, another storm slamming into British Columbia, really stormy across Alaska. And then now here's what I really want to watch. Look what happens as we head towards the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th. Yeah, there starts to be less amplification, but that's, again, because you're taking 50 members that have different solutions. But the mean, the average, look what we're looking at. Cold weather for the upper Midwest into parts of the southeast and especially here into parts of the mid-atlantic and the northeast if you really push this out in time this kind of sticks around as we head through the 8th 9th and 10th i do think we see some warming here across parts of the prairies and then we're probably going to do it all again